Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Set 6 between SKT and Oz. Again, if you're wondering why this is a solo, it's because this is the... Everybody was involved, well, almost everybody, in the finals cast. The finals cast, however, was difficult to sync. You can find the original audio in SC2GG once again. And I hope to get this out before the weekend is finished. I'm going to eat dinner after this cast and I come right back. Probably do this, do a requested match between... I think it was the fourth set between Eastro and STX was one of the recommended games. That will be a solo on my account. And I might do a Counter-Strike match, actually, that was played a while ago for your viewing pleasure. Once again, you can check out Freak, who is the Warcraft 3 caster who is in the mix at wcreplays.org. That's the best place to find him. So anyway, this match between, of course, Lomo and Best. And it's very interesting, because this is on Shades of Twilight. And Lomo is specialized on Shades of Twilight, but he hasn't had that dominant win streak that you'd expect from a specialized player on a map. So, yeah, you'd expect 75% winning ratio. I think he's been closer to 50% on this map. Don't quote me on that, though. I haven't looked critically at the statistics. But he has been playing a lot of really high-level Terran. This is a lot like Byzantium, however, the mineral only is on the outside, which makes it very difficult for Protoss players. So... Going up against Best, who's a Protoss player, Best has a lot of work cut out for him here. Specifically, I feel like he's got to stick to two base play and go from there, and there's a lot of things that Terran can do to win this map. I mean, it's much easier for them to hold expansions, I feel, than it is for Protoss, and Vultures past two bases are so, so strong, because everything, everything past your second is exposed totally exposed to Vultures, so you either have to keep units back, you have to play a very strong map control game, which is nigh impossible because there's three exits you can take. There's one that leads out to the 9 o'clock and there's two that kind of lead out into the middle of the map. Looks like Lomo just going to go for that barracks and gas. Not sealing his front door, so gonna we'll see what he does from here. Probe Scout wandering the upper left-hand corner first for Best. Best also grabbing gas and gateway. And I almost think it might be worthwhile for Best to try to go Nexus quickly very early because it's again you got to try to stay ahead and on top of that do something off two bases and win it from there i feel like the longer economic game is a mistake but maybe best can pull something out with that he is a very strong macro player and here we're seeing jadong who looks actually a little bit worrisome in this map i definitely think he's rooting for lomo he wants the matches to be finished and having lost two in a row it's got to be a little bit unstudying for him of course fantasy and then earlier to Hyuk, maybe a little bit disappointed himself. Keep in mind, Zerg players do play in confidence alone. Looks like there's only a single SCV going into that refinery, so probably going to see a fast expansion from Lomo. Probe now coming around to get a spot in here, and that, that nice little wall production line here from Lomo where you can kind of avoid the Zealot should they come. Cross positions, we shouldn't see any Zealot pressure, though. There is the cybernetic score. doesn't look like actually a first Zealot. Actually, mm, we'll see him momentarily. It might be at the ramp. We'll see if that uh, SCV greets a zealot right off that front. Probe Scout uh, can be greeted by Marine just shortly. There it is. Rick Field, second Marine uh, being produced here, which could be uh, an indicator for Fantasy that, well, maybe uh, we'll see how it goes here. Again, I, I feel like Fantasy. <laughs> Sorry there, for Best. Well, really, again, I feel like Best would be better off, okay, actually putting down additional pylons, so going a little bit more of the economy route earlier. I think he would be well suited by a one gate into expansion build, especially cross positions, especially knowing Lomo looks like planning is planning on expanding. Um, there's a couple of things Lomo can do to kind of threaten that. He can produce the additional Marines. A lot of players have been doing that recently. Looks like that SCV scout just now coming around to that upper right -hand corner. Probe going to grab some minerals here from that 9 o'clock position. Every little bit hurts. <laughs> Make sure that Lomo uh, doesn't get that little bit of mine and you can kind of use it earlier that SCV going to get pinned in but at least he's seeing the secondary he's not seeing a probe to take it in position and that probe scout let's see if it gets blocked out actually because there's at least going to be I think we're going to see at least a standard four marines here from Lomo on the front there's a robotics facility being placed so it looks like it's going to be one uh, robo into expansion rather than uh, one gate into expansion which is uh, going to need some good economic harass against this, actually. Three Marines going to the 9 o'clock, trying to see if he could kill, uh, catch that probe scout. Probe scout, uh, not quite going to make it to the ramp, going to back off. Still, uh, at least got to look at the Marine count so he can swing back around. Best still wants to keep an eye at that secondary, make sure that Lomo's not up to anything too tricky here. Uh, there's that first tank. And there is an SCV in position. It looks like it's just mining in five Marines instead of six. And there's that barracks floating. So this is interesting from Lomo because this is... So there's been a, I'm sure you guys know, there's been that six marine rush with the vulture to support with that, with the mines. So basically one tank, six marines, and a vulture pressing against uh, kind of an early expansion. It's almost pseudo-FD, and it looks like 
Wow, so best going to respond by instead of taking a Nexus, t putting down a second gateway and getting an observatory really quick. So going to try to counter it that way. I don't think he produced a lot of Zealots, and Zealots really help against this sort of rush. I feel like this is pioneered because of Neo Medusa. You had that 10-15 gate where you just a whole lot of Dragoons early on Neo Medusa and the mines with the Vultures really kind of shoved that back. And with the Marines to support, you could do a lot of damage. You could still go up, get your command center pretty quickly, and deny your Protoss, uh, and, and deny the Protoss second base. Looks like just now putting down that next second nexus after that second gateway but this is going to put best a little bit uh, further behind in a little bit uh, unsavory economic position there is the engineering bay being placed from lomo so anticipating maybe some dark templar or some reaver play here but that five marine i, I gotta say might have just kind of puzzled him a little bit he's now seeing that command center so probably feeling a lot more confident uh here so nice little probe run in there to kind of catch that but yeah with the five marines because that's the thing when you produce additional marines it slows that command center down but but you still manage to throw your Protoss opponent. I think it's worth it, basically, is what I'm trying to say here. Citadel of Adun, so we're going to see Quick Dark Templar probably in a shift to ar two base Arbiter here. Two tanks on the front, still those five Marines. And let's see if Best can run up and do any pressure. He's still got to hurt Lomo's economy somehow. I think it would be a mistake to skip either a Dark Templar drop uh, in the main or any sort of, although it would be a little bit late on this tech tree, to go for the Reaver drop. Still some mines planning out in the field. Not really good mine placement in the back. And I'm, the engineering bay is placed. Okay, there's that turret up on the uh, on the front. Let's see if you can get some good turret placement along the back. That pylon ordering position and uh, SEV, or I'm sorry, probes being transferred. Good blockade there, though. So shuttle, there's the Citadel of Adun. Not seeing the Templar archives just yet. And I think Lomo uh, producing additional factories. Lomo's going to be in a good position here to get the kind of the factor. Okay, he does have detection out in the field, so Best is going to have to go in with more Dark Templar than basically just the standard few. He's going to try to get as many Dark Templar in there as possible to any inflict any sort of economic damage. Let's see if he can pick up a quick third. No, never mind. He's going to skip the Dark Templar drop altogether, and maybe he can go back to it, but it looks like he wants to get those Arbiters as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. Two more factories for Lomo, sorry, three more factories for Lomo, going up to four, and I expect him actually to go up to six off two bases and then very comfortably take that nine o'clock, because again, Vulture is very strong out in the middle of the map. Best, maybe with a good recall or a good stasis, um, can pull something out. There's that armory, and that's the other thing, is, is if he, um, armory and academy as well. Um, let's see if he gets some early detection. Vulture wandering up, uh, able to get a little bit of a hit there, and that observer able to kind of get a good look at what Lomo's up to, but this is a very difficult position for Best. Best is going to try to do the tech run. Um, he's going to have to hold back Lomo a little bit, although, again, I think Lomo is going to be throwing out more vultures rather than tanks here into the mid-game just to keep that third base a little bit pushed. But he has got a decent amount of tanks. So he's got five tanks on the front, and that, uh, with the supplement, and again, with that tech push, could put uh, a little bit of a difficult position, Best in a little bit of a difficult position. Lomo no, now moving out, and this tech is actually nowhere near finished. I don't think I say that, saw that Arbiter Tribunal finish, and this might be well timed, so Best gonna have to micro well against this. He doesn't have a lot of dragoons out in the field. D needs to catch this army while it's spread out, killing a couple. Looks like he's catching a couple SCVs, and Lomo actually a little bit spread. It didn't look like he was committing his entire attack force. Um, one vulture dying, siege tanks uh, right there in position. But this is exactly what Best needs to do: create some delay. Losing two, ooh, running headlong into that though, losing two dragoons. He has able to. He was able to clear a lot of the support units, but he has a dark templar in the mix as well. That dark templar really gonna sl uh, wow stop this attack. The academy was place but Lomo not putting down the commsat station just yet and this is going to give critical time for basically first of all more units and additionally arbiters so best just narrowly and I would say that it was more a mistake on Lomo's part he did have that academy up and just maybe a bit of a an afterthought still Lomo in a, a pretty strong position his push got uh, kind of held up, but he still got a lot of factories, a lot of production. He didn't commit too much. He still took out a lot of Dragoons. He can afford to kind of lose this army here because, yeah, this is still a pretty uh, a pretty good map for him. But Best actually in, uh, accomplished what he wanted to. He's going to have those Arbiters out. Ooh, two Dark Templars uh, getting splashed there, one of them getting taken out. Um, but, yeah, Lomo uh, kind of missed an opportunity there because he didn't have that, econ that academy up. And still, uh, is the Arbiter out in the field? It looks like there's nothing being built there. Still some Dragoons up ahead and there's those full vo four vultures vultures immediately in the transition play here 
Looks like one Dragoon, oh, able to step back, and that Observer getting back just in time. And Lomo going for some sort of a soft push. Odd. So he's going to go for a soft push up in the field. He has that turret. He has four Siege Tanks. Let's see if, ooh, and this is going to be difficult, because going straight for that Arbiter tech, uh, Best is going to be a little bit unit short, so he's going to have to try to break this with fewer units than I think he really wanted to. This is also opening up those Vultures, but a nice pylon wall um, planted, so they're going to have to uh, be shoved down. The Dragoon's easily able to go through that, but the Vultures have difficulty. But yeah, but it looks like Lomo's going to be able to take Residence up on that ramp, and I like this play. This is also going to give him opportunity to take the, the 9 o'clock. Knowing basically that Best was relegated to two-base play, he's going to try to take position, get the mines planted, get some turrets up. Best needs to stop this and stop this now. Dark Templar, no, okay, there was a commsat, able to hit it, but Dragoon's moving in uh, along that cliffside edge and uh, redirecting it looks like. And just three tanks there, no ad additional tanks and no mines were planted. But Best losing a lot of his Dragoons, looks like he's going to be able to clean up this attack nicely though. So still uh, able to stop that. A couple more Dragoons coming in to support, but critically he took out all the siege tanks, and siege tanks are what maintain a contain, not Vol so Lomo feeling a little bit undecided here because it looks like he he still wants to try to sneak in. He still wants to try to deny that nine. He's still uh, that nine o'clock and that, or sorry that three o'clock and that twelve o'clock. And he's still he's throwing vultures out there instead of tanks. It looks like he's dedicating all of his factories to vulture production. I guess he really didn't feel like he could hold it. And really was more interested in making sure Best expended a lot of troops so he wouldn't have a lot for uh, basically to stop him him from taking that nine o'clock and going economically ahead. And it would kind of push into this mid game well this late game now. Uh, play where basically Lomo controls because he's got the vultures best has to take the nine or the or sorry the 12 or the three with the vultures that are just kind of annoying it looks like we do have that arbiter uh, out in play and still the vultures able to sneak in and get a couple kills uh, somewhere and now Lomo's easily going to be able to take bases where best is going to have a difficult situation to take bases so I like that play from Lomo I think it's uh, pretty clever and I, I think it was intelligent kind of for uh, from an overall strat uh, strategic perspective he is able to plant one mine there not going to take out the Dragoon but at least going to damage it planting another mine that was take out, uh, taken out very quickly so now he can abandon that contain he can pull back he can take that 9 o'clock and for him taking that 9 that 6 again very easy he can continue to harass uh, with the vultures and two engineering base. Not sure what the purpose of that was. A uh, little bit confusing. <laughs> Maybe for additional spotting. But now Best is in the difficult position where he's, yeah, he's got these vultures that are just kind of flooding out all over the place. He's going to have a hard time defending any expansion he's going to take. He doesn't he doesn't have a lot of units right now to push for any map control. Uh, Segner Refinery hasn't been built for quite some time there. It doesn't really matter because, again, this is more of the vulture stage of the game for Lomo. And Lomo just now getting that weapons one, planting a mine at the 12 o'clock. 3 o'clock, try, best trying to take it, but the vultures, as you can see, uh, right there, it looks like they're just, kind of, they're almost like vultures. Uh, like, <laughs> wow, that was the dumbest statement ever. Vultures are living up to their name here, and they really do look like the birds of prey that are the scavengers just sitting looking for the, we the weakness of their opponent, looking for opportunities to just fly in and kill um, kind of the overly weak opponent, the one that's uh, that's limping, just kind of pick it off and stray after basically any sort of weakness that it, that's picked there. And that was the most awkward uh, commentating. I've, that was a good minute of awkward commentating right there. Starport being built from <laughs> Lomo to try to get that science vessel out to try to counter this. Um, let's see if he takes... I think he's taking the 6 o'clock simultaneously because, again, he's really safe in doing this. Best has to play a little bit more defensively has to play very defensively to take that 3 o'clock where Lomo uh, with just vultures can kind of hold him back. And let's see what Best can can do actually in this map. He's gonna... He's, I, I really feel like Best would be best suited with some sort of recall uh, into Lomo's main. Try to do something that way. Uh, maybe he can pull something like that off. I don't know. More mines being planted just to provide a little bit of uh, kind of that nice static defense. It looks like that six o'clock location um, eh, it was just an engineering bay. I thought it might be a, a, an SCV at location, but still, this is three bases versus three. Lomo got his third base up much sooner, so he's going to be in an economic, uh, economically superior position. And he it looks like upgrades wise, he's doing quite savvy. He's uh, doing rather well. A lot of, but very vulture heavy, very tank light. So this is a good opportunity. Should there be enough energy to store it up to go for a comsat and with that observer inside the base uh, to kind of pull something out, 
um, for for best, but it, I I don't know. Uh, really, the key for Lomo is this right here: is whenever best is going to make a move, just kind of do a soft counterattack, sneak in underneath, go in, take a couple probes out. Um, whenever he moves out, go in, take a couple probes out. Make sure that you just are, have six vultures at any time queued up, for so whenever best kind of ventures out, you can just swing back around and punish him for it. Punish him for not staying at home base there. A lot of mi you can see all the mines. Lomo very keenly aware of the arbiter recall option. Really concerned about. It has a whole lot of <laughs> uh, defenses there specifically for that. Getting a couple turrets out in the field. It's still very tank light. Um, still with just a couple of tanks. So storing up a lot of gas. And I'm kind of curious what he's going to use that gas for. Best trying to take another base. Which means he's going to have to play a heavy map control game. And this is interesting. He's just going to use these Arbiters and as a Dragoon Zealot Force to kind of patrol across the middle of the map and try to catch Vultures as they're moving out. And let's see how successful he is in doing this. Um, I honestly, it's, I, I almost feel like this is um, silly because it's going to have a really hard time doing it. Lomo taking his own mineral only, so it's still even bases. It looks like Lomo's actually just patrolling a single vulture in that bottom right-hand corner to make sure that Besta uh, doesn't really get an opportunity to take that. Because you can, even if Lomo manages to get into that upper left-hand base, he can swing all the way around and again continue to harass either that mineral only on best side of the map or that 12 o'clock. Uh, a couple of uh, a couple of dragoons able to get up there and do a little bit of harassment, um, not too much harassment, but critically Lomo. You know, uh, actually have back in his base and best able to get across the map and put on a little pressure here. Part of that is is there was no science vessel out in the field. Level one, it looks like that second armory being produced. Level one weapons though for best, so he's not uh, too shabby as far as the upgrades go. Keep in mind though that a fully upgraded, that's the other thing, is just as long as it stays even bases, a fully upgraded Terran army will always beat um, a fully upgraded Protoss army at max supply. Um, so Best doesn't want to end up facing that scenario, and, but with Arbiters in the mix, anything can happen. And this is that difference in the map, is those tanks can just hang out over that mineral only, play defensively there, whereas Best doesn't have that option. He has to keep the units on the ground. Vultures again, sneaking in, going to be able to get a couple more probe kills. Looks like, and that's really worth it, just devastating. Uh, also sneaking up at 12 o'clock, killing a quick probe there. And this is exactly what Lomo needs to keep doing. Keep putting that pressure, make sure the army has to, Best's army has to be everywhere, but in his face while he continues to expand, keep the even bases, continue to build an army until he just has an overwhelming amount of tanks on the ground, has some science vessels out in play, has the upgrades, and just can uh, push out at leisure, basically. Best uh, able to push up a little bit here, so it looks like he's going to try to play, he has a pretty wide contain. Going to run up, actually, to the mineral only. It might be able to, he looks like he's got a good position to take this out. Nice stasis getting two tanks, but still, I'm not sure how long this is going to last with those tanks on that cliffside edge. He's losing a lot of the zealots, and they have such a long way to go. They really don't have access. Nice uh, nice secondary stasis, but it looks like the Dragoon's going to be able to run up and take out that command center, so nice victory there for Best. And Lomo actually in a bit of trouble here. Because Best now actually economically ahead did exactly what he needed to do. And if he can continue to do that, actually, press Lomo back, um, snipe some command centers. Critically, I think Lomo lost an opportunity to bring those vultures back around and go for a counterattack. That's what he just needs to keep doing. Whenever Best moves out and does something like that, send the vultures out, uh, have them harass something, have them take something out. And it looks like he's starting to do that now, but it's just too late. Best is already back in position. And this is the other thing for Best. Best can't overcommit with any of these attacks. He cannot lose his entire army. Because if he ever loses his entire army, those vultures are just going to wreak havoc absolutely everywhere. Um, you're going to have all sorts of... It, it's just going to be big, big trouble. 3 o'clock position, gas still not taken. It looks like Best still in uh, just waiting, going a little bit more zealot heavy, uh, I suppose, to try to brush those mines out of the way here. Um, Lomo, again, trying to get a couple turrets out in the field. He does have that science vessel. Needs more science vessels out in the air, really. Um, and going to continue out. And Best looks like he's going to go for another attack. Level 2 weapons are upgraded from Lomo, so he's a very strong army. A little, a couple of SCVs. It looks like the, I'm sorry, it's a main mined out. A recall at the nine o'clock position. So very nice, an EMP right there. And now Lomo actually in bad economic shape. SKT might be able to take the match here. Best uh, if he takes out. Oh, he's going to be able to take the command center out even. Ooh, devastating for Lomo. Lomo does have the level 2 weapons. He's going to be able to clean up this army, but Lomo needs to do something quickly because now Best at three bases um, base, uh, is going up against Lomo with just a single base, and he's got a pretty sizable army. So Best is in a good position to take this. There, he might be able to pull something out and end this match now. He's in a dominant position. He can actually, if he wants to, start playing the economic game as well. And that's a lot of tanks from Lomo. Lomo, honestly, I think he might be wise to just go out and go for attack. And Beast is like, wow, that's a lot of tanks. Uh, might be wise to just go out with an attack of his own. Looks like another command center was already there to replace. 
Slow-mo, or I'm sorry, that's from his main. Uh, no, that's from his, is that from his secondary? It looks like he just built another command center. He's planning on floating somewhere, so very quickly able to, to minimize the damage and replace it immediately, but still some SCVs lost, and that's one less base that's moving out the field. Best trying to take that 12 o'clock. So Lomo not too far out. That's not as bad as I thought it would be. Um, Lomo immediately able to start repro uh, reproducing, able to start producing out of that three uh, that 9 o'clock base again. Some science vessels is moving out the field, going to try to get an open field EMP. The, he did manage to EMP that Arbiter, that hurts a lot. Every uh, stasis and recall is going to be absolutely critical for best. Um, Siege tanks, again, in kind of a nice defensive position. A couple of mines being cleared. Okay, it moved up from the middle only. He's more concerned about the gas. That's where that command center came from. So it's still two bases uh, versus, well, looks like four now. So best in superior economic position. Um, and he might be able to swing this match around. And actually, it's, I think it's actually two bases versus three here because I think best's main is now mined out as well. We're quite a bit into the match here. And best actually doing a fantastic job, I would say, in a very difficult situation, on a very difficult map, um, doing everything he needs to do at this point. Lomo uh, not out of the game by any means here. It looks like his main gas is depleted. He needs to think about taking some bases of his own. Best, though, it feels like he's not doing a lot here. Um, I think he should be not very good probe saturation at 12 o'clock. I think he should be taking some more bases, or he should be going in for um, some more attacks. And it looks like he is pushing in for another attack. Uh, ooh, let's see. If, oh, they're perfect for stasis. He does manage to get a lot of tanks with those stasis. He also gets the science vessels. Let's see if he can run and take that 9 o'clock in. He's at the very least going to stop that mineral only from being produced. But Lomo has so many tanks uh, in the background here. And that stasis actually working against a wall with these Dragoons. It looks like there was was another science vessel behind, so detection right there. So not all of the science vessels were in fact uh, com <laughs> were in fact taken care of. Stasis is the word I was looking for, not comsatted. So best losing a lot of troops there for not a lot of payoff. I think he might be better off instead of continually trying to to push into Lomo, just trying to get as many bases as possible, and then going from there. Um, maybe even going for some drops across the main rather than uh, the nine o'clock here. And it looks like he's trying to come back to the twelve. A couple vultures did manage to squirt through, and this is what Lomo needs to start doing: is yeah, sending out those attacks now, um, take out whatever he can wherever he can. It looks like he went for the secondary, but there wasn't a lot um, there and kind of squirted through. That's the thing he's been missing thus far in the match is whenever best has been in doing these large moves against him, he hasn't been uh, really key on and sent the vultures out in the field to go take out either the 12 or the 3, which are extremely vulnerable. There are two two cannons at the 12 o'clock, but that's nothing that 8 vultures um, can't still get kills underneath. They'll still manage to get a good amount of kills. Lomo trying to take his mineral only now. Neglecting the 6 a bit, I feel. So, um, and it looks like those two science vessels uh, at the forward position, they're pretty well spread out, so it'd take two stasis to take care of them. Best moving in again. Uh, level 1 weapons is upgraded. I'm uh, sorry, level 1 armor is upgraded here. And it looks like that first... Oh, nice EMP catching everything. That was huge. Lomo with that one EMP is going to stymie that entire attack, and Best is going to have to return to home base. And that's... Uh, and still no gas at the 3 o'clock. Wow. Still no bi uh, gas at the 3 o'clock here from Best, um, and still no gas at the 12 o'clock either. Sticking very heavily to infantry and sticking uh, and actually not able to produce as much as I think he uh, would want to otherwise. A couple mm, needs to be careful with those science vessels. A single life getting isolated out in the field. See if he can get another good EMP off. Um, the Arbiter is being a little bit aggressive. I'm not sure if this is the same Arbiters. I think it's the same Arbiters. Uh, maybe just trying to, to incur some more EMP. Level 2 weapons upgraded for best, but level 3 weapons, level 1 armor for Lomo. So Lomo with a very dangerous mech army a very powerful mech army and he has got a lot of tanks and best very dragoon heavy right now he doesn't have a lot of zealots not that that would really help him and this is not the p i feel like this is a bad point of attack because there's still uh lomo can lift off without too much trouble looks like he's bringing in some more arbiters from that other uh, location looks like they were comps added and with the level three weapons um and that tank side advantage yeah best is gonna have to back off um so it looks like lomo in a great position and a very nice defensive stance and best not doing what he needed to do i feel which is take expansions rather than continue to try to take lomo's expansion out so especially with the upgrade difference I feel um, so I, I feel like there was some critical things where where best could have taken the match right there but he didn't so and it looks like <laughs> Jadong warming up warming up for the inevitable uh, if there is an ace match here he will inevitably be sent out he definitely wants Lomo to win the, to be sent out for that and oh nice stasis another good EMP and there again there's still a big tank line behind this just the architecture of this makes it so difficult for Protoss pushes and it looks like there's still detection because all these tanks getting wiped out I think that was from Comsat though and all the Dragoons getting wiped out and Best has no more army and this is really going to open up the field for Lomo Lomo going to be able to move out and I'm not sure what Best was really thinking. First of all, um, 
going for like, just straight infantry, not really taking any gas, not continuing to pump Arbiters his best. And there Lomo does it. He's moving in with what looks like a tank and two Vultures. That's what he needs to do is do the soft counterattacks um, just underneath which are really going to set Best back. So Best actually, I would say, in a, an economically desperate situation now because Lomo managing to get back up to two bases, even though even though Best was at three bases for a while there, he didn't have the gas critically, and it's kind of the gas that can make the difference there. More uh, Okay, it was a dropship out there that's allowing these vultures to get back out in the field. So <laughs> And Best, again, not taking anything to the bottom right or top left. What you really think he needed to do. So, and I feel like he's lost his opportunity. A couple zealots able to take out some vultures um, there in midfield. I'm sure he's taking the gas now because he's going to need it. I think his main and his secondary are probably depleted. Um, the vultures running out their arbiters, uh, providing a little bit of support. But Lomo able to swing back right into the kind of the comfortable Terran game plan, which is send out the vultures, t you know, keep hitting that 9 o'clock, that 12 o'clock, that 12 o'clock, not saturated at all. So these weren't even fully producing bases, bases for best at any point, I feel like. Just the, the probe saturation was so light that it didn't feel like they were fully producing bases. So he was really going heavy with those infantry attacks in the last 5-10 minutes. Really heavy with the infantry attacks. Uh, and unfortunately, it didn't feel like he had the upgrades and those, that, those uh, EMPs were absolutely huge. Getting those three Arbiters in particular in that grouping with that one EMP just devastated that attack altogether. So Lomo right back in the thick of it. Really clutch play. Another dropship at the 12 o'clock. Cannon's hitting it. It looks like Best is there. But he's being held back, and not pushing up, not attacking, still not taking expansions. And Lomo uh, is going to be able to move out, take his initial play. Oh, Vulture's getting in, able to kill a lot of probes here, or at least uh, send the probes fleeing, actually. It looks like the Vultures were taken care of not too, not too long, but this is going to open up a drop to the 12 o'clock. Now it looks like that tank able to get uh, a couple of kills here and there. He wasn't able to focus really on the probes to do a devastating... Oh, mine! Able to kill... Oh! Huge mistake there by Best. Running up with the Zealot and a mine able to kill a lot of probes. Which looked like they had just moved in there to saturate that base. Uh, more Dragoons, and that's not a lot of Dragoons actually to move out. They're going to run headlong into some tanks and get squashed. And that you can see that, just the tanks just pummeling the Dragoons. And right now, it looks like Best in the back foot, Lomo able to secure his 6 o'clock. He's starting to move across, build some supply depots, build some turrets to kind of hold that. And yeah, Best... Um, completely in the defensive. He's got most of his army at the 12 o'clock. Worried about Vulture harasses there. Looks like Lomo almost mined out at the 9. And it, So right now, it looks like Best is going to be still at two bases because he didn't really mine out of that for quite some time. But Lomo also at two bases. And he swung around and actually uh, ended up in a superior economic position. And not a lot of troops on the ground here from Best at all. Uh, so And it looks like he actually was at three bases. I take that back. So three bases versus two. But still, just the way the mining's working, it feels like... And I didn't see whether he took that, that gas on the third yet or not. Um, but it still didn't feel effectively like the same thing, and the upgrades are just devastating. No level 2 armor yet, though, for Lomo, uh, and best a uh, lot of zealots. I think this is going to be, he's going to need a really big critical attack. Lomo uh, needs to keep doing this, though, keep sending the vultures out, delay that attack, keep building his army up, keep getting the defense up. 12 o'clock empty. There is uh, still no gas at the 12 o'clock. Um, the vulture's still wandering around. He's getting actually a good look at the kind of army size he's going to have to deal with here in a minute. But even then, a 200-200 army, um, best with the inferior upgrade still. Blomo's in a great position. It looks like that observer's seeing the 6 o'clock, so he's going to have to move out and do something about that. And so now best has to take a lot of expansions, take out some of Lomo's expansions to really get back into this, and a lot of tanks all over the place. The science vessel's also in position. Best looking somewhat concerned. You can almost see the condensation on his glasses from the concentration here. Yes, apparently the concentration creates steam through the eyeballs. That's how intense this match is. Um, <laughs> a big zealot force. Another arbiter coming out. Looks like we're going to see a recall. A recall across the main. Let's see, and Lomo's not in very good position. It looks like that science whistle in. Oh, right there. To kind of herd it back, almost like a sheepdog here. And let's see if he decides to EMP this arbiter in that corner. And, uh, it looks like that Arbiter is going to escape, but, but unfortunately some Goliaths uh, right there to kind of pin it back. We might see a just desperate recall there nevertheless. And no, uh, okay, last second recall to try to get some troops in at the very least and do something with that Arbiter. 
but uh, that is going to open up that 6 o'clock for Best. Best is going to be able to run in some troops here. And there's not, and it could be a double-pronged attack. It is a two-pronged attack. That command center, they'll lift it off immediately from Lomo. I don't think Lomo's going to have too much trouble retaking that. Um, but that was a nice little clever maneuver by Best, and Best going in for a huge attack, but so many tanks and a lot of mines in the way. And he's he's going to be running into a very fixed position, and whenever it's like that, and there we go, Lomo doing exactly what he needs to do. As soon as Best going up for that attack, sending in those vultures to the 12 o'clock to drain that base once again, and just continue, continue the boxing match. Now the Zealot's running into the 9 o'clock, even though there's not a lot there. Uh, a lot of mines there. It doesn't, I don't think he's going to accomplish a lot there at the 9. I think he realizes it now backing those Zealots up. Um, and there's a lot of the big trail of units <laughs> over that direction. Bring the Zealots back. Let's see if Lomo sent out, it doesn't look like he sent out another Vulture Force anywhere with some dropships or anything like that. Retaking the six, and now, yeah, Best has got to continue uh, to take out one of these bases. I think he needs to take out that six o'clock critically and somehow get some more bases of his own. Um, and in the midst of a big Vulture Harass, level two armor now online, and yeah, you can see it. Look at that on the classroom and everything. Huge pressure, huge pressure. Uh, six o'clock location. Dragoon's wary right there. Lomo looking actually confident and in control. He's got a lot of tanks moving to kind of supplement this force, but there is an Arbiter in the mix and a good stasis, uh, or a good recall actually, could really devastate here really devastate. There is a science vessel in position, um, and there's that Arbiter going across the north. A little bit of a decoy. I think he's going to try to draw that science vessel out. No, he's going to go for your recall, maybe at the main, but I think that EMP hit, so he's going to have to back off. Now bringing the Dragoons up, but tanks already right there to hit a lot of those troops. So best a little bit of a faltered attack and still not taking any additional bases. Okay, finally, he has a pylon in this upper left-hand corner, but uh, already some troops there to distract it, and Lomo again sending out the vultures to kind of do some harassment, um, but it looks like he's running headlong into an army right there. Probe, sat oh, ooh, probe saturation rather light there at the 12 o'clock. Another Arbiter, it looks like we could see a, kind of a faint attack, one kind of pushing in the mineral only in just the middle of the map, the upper six, and then another Arbiter kind of coming in along the corner. Um, they kind of go for either a recall directly at the six or or recall at the main, and I think it's going to be directly on this six. So it looks like, oh, a lot of troops there for recall. So nice positioning from Best all over that six o'clock location. He's going to be able to take out this base, no problem. No problem. But he's stranding a lot of his army, and I don't know that he has a lot of troops. Lomo, with a nice counterattack, can be able to take out that 12 o'clock. Um, so Best, even though he's able to take out this base at the six, I feel like he's going to get starved out because he doesn't have, and you can see the clap from Hua Song Oz. They, uh, they know it. They know basically that Best just lost his army. He doesn't have a lot he can really counter with, uh, and Lomo is easily going to be able to retake that 6 o'clock as, well as, uh, as well hold that mineral only. So he's in a fantastic economic position. Best has no more army on the ground. Looks like he read, uh, ran headlong into some mines right there. And Lomo, again, doing exactly what he needs to do. Little punches there uh, at the kind of the cross position. Flooding those units across. He's using dropships rather than vultures, kind of to press across to do it. And it looks like he can just send another SCV out at leisure to take that six. Um, best still not taking any additional bases. He's got to be out at the three o'clock. That twelve o'clock probably is only producing base. So now Lomo at two bases, best at a single base. And I'm not sure what happened to that cast. It looks like a couple probes being uh, seen in transition. Dropship taking some free hits from its cannons. It looks like it's taken out before it can really drop anything. A little, uh, little bit of pain there, but a mine actually out in the way in that upper left. That's got to be frustrating for Best. All of his probes, I think, at that 6 o'clock, uh, I'm sorry, at that 12 o'clock, some vultures, I'm sorry, some zealots, some dragoons with an arbiter, again, kind of marauding across that mineral only. Some cannons being placed, and then the vultures able to sneak into the 12 o'clock again with Best's entire army out of, uh, oh man, out of position. Lomo doesn't even have the 6 o'clock, and he's going to have to swing back around. I think he's just assuming that 6 o'clock was going to be retaken, and Lomo has so many tanks there waiting for it, uh, and the vultures able to run in. They're going to massacre the 12, and I think that is going to absolutely devastate uh, that's going to devastate Best's economy, that command center floating back. That command center might get taken out, but uh, I still think that's worthwhile for Lomo. As long as he can get some probe kills here and take out Best's army, and it looks like he is going to be able to do so. Um, uh, might lose that command center, though, which would hurt. It definitely, it definitely does not help here. So... Still, actually, I'm going to say it's still pretty close. Best still might be able to do something to catch it, uh, catch up in this, but he's not very, uh, he, again, his economy's not very strong. It looks like he expended too many troops. Lomo able to swing back around. He's going to come back to the 12 o'clock with more vultures, kill a lot of these troops, only a single Dragoon to try to help, and with those mines in the mix, um, these probes are extremely vulnerable. Looks like he was able to, oh, the probe's running in and attacking the mines to, to save their own lives here. But that is, wow, every single probe killed except 
One. No, never mind. That one killed two. Best has no probes. He has no economy. Zero economy. Three o'clock, completely mined out. Lomo has his mineral only. Still, he can retake some positions. Best still has an army, but he needs to basically win this match with the army he has on the ground. A couple Dragoons wandering out, and unfortunately, he's running up against a really strong, a really highly upgraded Terran force. And it looks like the command center wasn't taken out. A lot of SCVs able to push out. Lomo knows it. He's going to start moving, and I believe this is an extremely clutch match for Lomo. Lomo able to pull it out through some nice positioning, some nice strategy, some nice defense on the Shades of Twilight here. Um, the Dragoon's running up. This is kind of a suicidal attack from Best. SCVs coming off the line because the SCVs can uh, come off the line at this stage and Best probably going to GG in just a minute here. Um, probably will fight it out because it's a pro league set but Lomu knows he's got it. He knows there's nothing in between. Best's very vulnerable 12 o'clock location and he is huge army of tanks that are just trotting, marauding up. Ooh, mine's going off too, and that hurts a lot. And you can see the Oz team just celebrating. They know it. They're going to be able to take it to an ace, and they have their, their champion, Jadong, waiting, the guy who's won them so many matches uh, in the past, taking them into ace set seven. And really what uh, you still, granted, he lost last, uh, he, he lost yesterday, but Neil Medusa, who could you want more than Jadong? Such a clutch player. You got to think that they're probably going to field fantasy in the opposite end. Uh, still no gas take at the 12 o'clock, and Best uh, looks like he's trying to use what units he had left to try to stop that mineral only, but that is it. He, I don't think he has any more Dragoons. I don't think he has any more Zealots. Okay, I see one Zealot out in the field, um, but that looks like it's it, and, and it looks like it was comsatted. Just running in one Zealot versus seven or eight tanks, plus more Vultures to come, plus more units to come. Uh, yeah, don't think so. Nice shot on, <laughs> nice shot on Jadong there. He's going to come into it, and I don't know why Fantasy, or I'm sorry, keep doing that. I don't know why Best hasn't GG'd yet, um, and it looks like more probes. Uh, just helpless right there, completely helpless, as this vulture just wails at them, just completely just whacking at them, no problem. The Zealot can't even commit there because it's got to take on, it's got to be the Hero Zealot and take on the 8 tanks. Never mind, it's going to run up and try to engage <laughs> against the, the inf inferior forces here, and Best knows it. You can see it on his face. He's frustrated. More vultures running in really spelled the game I would say for Loma altogether and that's it no probes left anywhere okay there's a couple probes here and there but they're not mining um, they're not at the 12 o'clock where they need to be and that's game I would say the ref should pull on this is almost one of those towel moments where the ref comes in and says okay match you've beaten up my guy enough um, no troops out in the field okay a couple dragoons left but that wasn't going to stop the force there's GG we're going to go to the ace match hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for listening moving on to the ace